Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. We're going to continue on in Second Peter chapter one verse ten. Um, I've noticed that when I read the Bible, how I don't get a lot of views on these types of videos. So if you could share them, that would be great. Um, let's get out the word to everybody you know. Um, I've noticed that if I post things about end times or uh, latest articles or whatever, I seem to get a lot of views. But when I'm reading the Bible or anything like that, I barely, barely get any views. And we want to get the word out to everybody. So if you could share this um, on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever you can, um, Twitter, whatever, um, that would be greatly appreciated. I share them on Twitter as well. Um, but I think Twitter, it kind of gets lost in the mix with everybody. So um, that's just one of my requests, if you could do that, um, not to get get any more subs- subscribers or anything like that. I just want to be able to get it out, get this the word out um, in these last days and get as many people to hear the word as possible. So, because we never know who God is going to touch, whose life God is going to touch, and who, whose God's word is going to touch. So, anyways, with that, guys, we are going to be in, again, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, uh, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Verse 16, For we did not follow cunningly devised devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for his received for he received from God the Father honor and glory uh, when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Again, there is nobody that says, well, um, you know, God told me to share this with you. God wanted me to um, give you this prophetic word so that you can receive it. That's, no. Mm -mm. God shares things with our hearts. um, But as far as prophecy goes, like in times, like God showed me that, you know, on such and such a day that these things were going to happen or I'm coming on such and such a day, that's not the case. Um. We're going to go into chapter 2, but we are not going to finish chapter 2. We are going to go down to verse 11. So chapter 2, verse 1, we will start. We will end in verse 11. But there were also false prophets among these people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bringing themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. 
For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to night by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise authority they are presumptuous and self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them for before the lord there's a few little things that it says here the surest defense against false teaching is being equipped in the knowledge of the truth found in scripture if you are not grounded in the word if you do not know what the word says um You know, even if you don't know exactly, okay, like, you know, in John, you know, 3, 12, it says this, whatever. Um, You're going to know, gosh, that doesn't sound right. I think it it says somewhere in the Bible, you know, X, Y, and Z. If you're not grounded in the word, you don't know what the word says, you're going to be easily distracted. You're going to be easily um, coerced into believing a false doctrine. And um, you're going to easily follow those who are practicing and teaching false doctrines. There's a lot of people that um, are are saying with their mouth that they believe, but their actions speak differently. Um, they're saying basically that the, this is my will, not yours, Lord. And by that, I mean that they are telling people that basically they don't have to do anything with their life. They don't have to change their life around. Um, they don't have to uh, flee from sin they don't have to do anything with their life um, out apart from just belief. Um, and that they can continue to live the lifestyle that they once lived. That they can continue to uh, be disobedient. They can continue to not listen to the Lord. They can continue in all of these ways um, because they say that just because you are saved under grace and because you have eternal security then because you can't lose your salvation, you can basically live a certain way and it's fine. And that that's, um, goes so far against the word of God, it's unbelievable. And sadly, many people follow that doctrine or follow in that manner because they don't know what the word of God says. Um, it even says here, that God will not tolerate those who turn others from the ways of truth, which we can see happening all over. Um, it says to convince his readers that God will swiftly and completely judge those who will willfully disobey him. Peter cites examples from the ancient past examples like fallen angels the world of the ungodly, Sodom and Gomorrah, all of those people were in disobedience to God. They were unwilling to um, live according to the Lord. They wanted to live in the flesh. They wanted to do what the flesh told them to do and and the the lusts of the flesh. They wanted to um, completely put aside the word of God and what it says to do. Um. It says, since even angels do not escape judgment, false teachers will be judged even more. When you have people that are teaching these teaching these heresies to people, they will be harshly judged um, because they are leading people away from the truth. And um, you know, nobody is going to be um, you know, get away from judgment. Everybody's gonna be you know, held accountable for their actions regardless because you you know you have a Bible and you are told to be a Berean and go through the Bible to to make sure that what this person is saying is true. Don't listen to man, listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to God. 
um, you're not going to be able to say, well, this person said that, you know, this, it's your responsibility to set what they say up against the word of God to see if it's true. And if it's not true, then you need to flee from that person because they are teaching heresies. There's a lot of people on YouTube who think that they are teachers or grace teachers or, um, whatever. And they're not, they are, uh, uh, reveler, re- revilers against the word of God. They don't believe what it says and they're teaching people um, to do the opposite of what God says and they're teaching people how to say my will, not yours, Lord. And they're teaching people how to live in a lifestyle that goes against God's word. So, um, you know, you guys need to be more careful on who you listen to, who you follow set it up against the word of God to see if it's actually true what they're saying. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people want to throw around verbiage like, well, the Bible doesn't say that. Well, there's a lot of things that the Bible doesn't say, but you have to take it as a whole. Um, you have to take it as, you know, a meaning, you know, for instance, um, the word Bible isn't in the Bible, the word, uh, church, excuse me, the word, repent of sin isn't in the Bible, but you have to take the word turning from as a form of repentance. Um, I'll go into that another, another time, but, um, believers should avoid reviling accusations against one, against others and treat all with all in authority, even their enemies with respect. Peter spares no words in describing the depravity of these false teachers. They are natural brute beasts that follow their own instincts. Oops, I I went ahead. (laughs) Um, Anyways, that's for tomorrow. I went ahead. Um, But, and, and, and that's true. You know, they follow their own ideas of what scripture says. They don't, they don't read the word of God. They just follow their own instincts. They follow their own ideas on what scripture says. And they're telling people publicly what, what to say, what not to say, who to watch, who not to watch, who's, who's, you know, a a false teacher, who's a false preacher. We need to be careful on who we are calling false teachers because you never know. You don't know that person's heart. You don't know what that person is doing behind closed doors. There's a lot of people, a lot of people on YouTube that come on and look wonderful on the outside, but they're completely different outside of YouTube. They don't live their life like what they're showing on YouTube. Um, They're completely different. They do things that they live in the world. They um, don't practice what they preach kind of thing. And I've always said that, you know, you need to be the same person on the, um, you know, in public that you are in private. You need to be the same person that it, that's, you know, just what you should be doing. You know, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be telling people not to do something and you're doing it yourself. You know, that's kind of like hypocritical, but, um, anyways, um, Yeah, so just that's our Bible study for today. We're going to continue on tomorrow in verse 12. I kind of went ahead with that commentary thing. But um, yeah, I have something that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to try to do it after this one. Might be in between Bible studies. Um, There's something with the Jewish temple that's coming up. Um, And then there was another thing that I noticed I was looking at the updates on the um, Abrahamic uh, house, the um, one world religion thing that's opening in Abu Dhabi. And what I found interesting with that whole thing is that there is no projected date for opening. There's no, uh, you know, hoping to be open by projected date. And it just says 2022. It doesn't say, you know by June, by September, it doesn't say anything where everything beforehand was, there's these projected dates about it, uh, you know, being completed, 
you know, 20% by such and such a date. So I found that kind of interesting. And then it said something on there. I'm not going to read it word for word because I can't, I don't have anything to read it word for word. However, it said something about how they're going to um, inaugurate the opening. They're going to be having um, sacrifices and they're going to be having um, prayers of the different faiths, religions. Um, and there's all these, there's like an itinerary of things that are going to be happening. I found that kind of interesting and I'll try to read that next time when I come on. I'm going to kind of do between that and then the um, Jewish temple that's coming out. Um, I found that on Twitter and I thought that was kind of interesting. That came out actually today. So I'm going to try to read that maybe later after I, after the kids go to bed. <laughs> I can be alone and I can maybe try to get that out. Um, it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys, I love you guys. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that everybody is having a safe start to their new year. Um, keep looking to the skies because things are taking off like we knew they would. Uh, the fuse was lit last year and it's about to go boom. Um, just everything that's happening just indicates that we are ever so close to the rapture. So just keep looking up and know that our Redeemer is coming soon. And again, if you could share this video anywhere you can, I don't know if I'm being shadow banned or if uh, what's what's happening but there's not there hasn't been a lot of views on the videos that I'm reading the word which I find kind of sad that nobody wants to read the word with me or do bible study with me but it is what it is so anyways guys I will talk to you later and I hope you have a blessed and beautiful rest of your day